ladies and gentlemen, Larry Dean. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, nice to meet you. It's, uh, thank you so much for coming, guys. Genuinely, really, really appreciate it. Uh, before I start, uh, I'll just let you all adjust to my face. <laughs> I look quite intense, don't I? I look like Medusa if she was in train spotting. <laughs> Actually, my mate summed up perfectly. My mate went, you look like Voldemort on a come down. <laughs> Pleasure to be back in Glasgow. <laughs> Also, oh, this bit at the beginning, I, I get to let the people watching at home uh, find the subtitle button. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is why it's great gigging in Glasgow, like uh, in Scotland as well. Just the fact that I don't have to watch too much what I say. Like, because usually if I do gigs in England, I can see audience members going, oh my God, I'm going to have to concentrate now. <laughs> I'll just smile and nod, that'll be enough. And when Americans hear my accent, they're like, oh my God, you're from Scotland. I'm from Dublin as well. <laughs> but now that I'm gigging in Scotland, you're just looking at me going, are you Catholic or Protestant? <laughs> It's a weird thing, because the Scottish accent is an odd thing, right? Because it's like, it's funny, but also it, when you go overseas, people can't understand you. But when you go overseas and you're single, that's when it comes into its own. <laughs> if you're single and you go overseas and you're from Scotland, you get a good exchange rate. <laughs> I'm not talking about the value of the pound, I'm talking about the value of the pound ding. <laughs> Because you might be a munter on this island, but if you go to America or Australia and you just talk, you're immediately like a nine out of 10, man. <laughs> but you go overseas, you're... I used to find myself walking into nightclubs in Australia and I would become more Scottish than I'd ever been in my life. I'd be like, oh, what is that, a ball bag? A geezer swatch, a lot, man. I can see the Aussies going, crikey, he is so exotic. <laughs> he looks like Ewan McGregor, but he sounds like Shrek. <laughs> that laugh is amazing, by the way. I'm, I'm hearing it and I feel like I'm doing the bleep test. <laughs> I'm nervous and I'm like, oh God. <laughs> I'm gonna start the show in a second, by the way. I'm not actually starting it. When you hear the opening line of the show, you'll be like, ah, I get why you didn't start with that line. <laughs> um, but I'll start the show now. So I was having a wank in Dubai. <laughs> it's a good place to masturbate. And um, I was just outside having some lunch, lowered my cutlery and went, it's time. <laughs> That's enough vitamin D, time for some vitamin me. And I went up to my room, right, and I sat at the side of the bed and I opened up my laptop to watch some gay porn, because I'm gay. <laughs> oh, sorry, did that hit you, by the way? All right, oh God, oh, that's how you catch it.
one bit of a party pop and like, cock. <laughs> <laughs> I was so worried that that was not going to pop. I don't think there's anything sadder than when a party popper doesn't pop. You know when, like, the party popper pops, but the party stays inside? <laughs> so put that down there. Okay, um, so I was trying to... Oh, yeah, so I was trying to watch some... Welcome to Homosexual Community. And... Um, <laughs> are you nodding? Are you already, already a member? Rainbow Socks. Yeah, look, all right. Yeah, so having your badge on your chest is such a straight person thing to do. Like, <laughs> I love that you go for the socks as well as if someone going, hey, are you gay? Yeah, look at this. <laughs> look good for you having the rainbow socks. Um, and, uh, actually, who is gay? <laughs> oh, cool. Five or six of us, cool. And, uh, <laughs> Are you human? <laughs> Can I borrow one of those socks? That's <laughs> I hope you've got tomorrow off. This might take a while. <laughs> right, so I opened up my laptop, tried to watch some of the gay porn, because I'm gay, and uh, I don't need to keep clarifying that. Um, I don't think anybody will watch this and think, oh, he's straight, but he watches gay porn. Very progressive of you. Long time. <laughs> but I was trying to watch some gay porn, but I couldn't uh, because it was blocked. It's illegal to be gay in Dubai, right? Which is actually weird. There's gay bars in Dubai. Uh, oh, not gay, gay bars. Uh, prisons. <laughs> but since the gay porn was blocked, I had to watch some of the straight stuff. <laughs> Long time listener, first time caller. <laughs> It's very weird watching straight porn as a gay Catholic. <laughs> I was wanking and I was thinking, my dad would be so proud of me right now. <laughs> it's a weird thing though, because I actually don't blame people in Dubai for being homophobic because they've kind of been brainwashed into thinking that way. Like, because I used to be homophobic. I hated myself for ages because I got brought up as a Catholic and I thought homosexuality was wrong and evil. Now I just think it's naughty. I... <laughs> but I think most gay people have that thing of getting over the initial shame of it. Like, my shame run deep, by the way, because I, I was so Catholic and so ashamed of who I was that I thought of going to a Pray the Gay Away camp. And, uh, I know, but you know what, what you think of Pray the Gay Away camps? It's weirdly a catchy name. <laughs> the name sounds gay friendly, like, oh, you're gonna Pray the Gay Away? Not today, but okay. <laughs> thing of if something rhymes people think it's true I think if the word gay was a word that had no rhyme there wouldn't be as many camps for it if the word gay was like a word like orange that has no rhyme there wouldn't be as many camps also if gay people called orange people would get more pride parades in Scotland and Northern Ireland <laughs> But pray the gateway camps, they are so weird, man, right? And you can look this up when you go home, right? What they do is they measure you using a Kinsey scale, which is a scale of one to six of how gay you are. It's like, who measures anything one to six? It's either one to five or one to ten. What must have happened is it was originally one to five. <laughs> and somebody's turned up. <laughs> and they were just so gay. Like, oh my God, he's a six. <laughs> it truly is the number of the beast. 
Just some guy looking like an inflatable man outside of a car dealership. Like... <laughs> I'm so glad I didn't go, obviously, but also I'm glad I didn't go, because if I went and it worked, that'd be awful. Because coming out of the closet is quite difficult, but going back in... <laughs> That must be a mission. I remember, actually, you see, when I was, uh, back when I was straight, um, loads of my mates used to call me a big poofter. And as soon as I came out as gay, they just stopped calling me it. <laughs> I could not be straight again. I wouldn't be able to handle the homophobia. <laughs> After, after the shame thing you get over, then you have the, uh, well, gay people tend to have an identity crisis. The ones I know, I had an identity crisis. Basically, before I came out as gay, I was like, I have to be as straight acting as possible. Right, you know, that straight acting thing, right? And then as soon as I came out as gay, I was like, oh, I can be myself. And I was like, who am I? And <laughs> so then I went really far the other way and I tried to be camp. And, uh, and I used to like go around with my wrist down. And I know I don't look camp, I just look ill. <laughs> I did that for a while and I got to go to Disneyland for free, so it wasn't all bad. <laughs> but nobody thought I was gay, right? So I started putting my bum out as well. That's my problem. If I was camp, I would just look like a dinosaur. Just walking down the road like that. Oh, there's a sail on. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just going like that. Like. Stay still. His vision is based on movement. <laughs> Are you okay? Okay, cool. <laughs> sorry. How was my flirting? Was that all right? <laughs> <laughs> Can I see your socks? <laughs> I think the reason why I don't blame people in Dubai is because I, you know, you can always learn something from somebody that you disagree with. I found that the same year that I was wanking in Dubai, <laughs> I went out for tea with two murderers. Murderers. <laughs> Murders. <laughs> uh, one of them's my mate, by the way. <laughs> my mate Zane, nice guy. Um, oh, you just so you know, it was in self-defense, right? To be fair to Zane. Also, uh, I was friends with Zane before he murdered somebody. I didn't just see somebody getting brutally murdered on the street and I was like, oh, nice one, pal, fancy a pint? <laughs> It was in self-defense, and I've been friends with him ever since I was a kid. And the way that this country works is if you do something bad, you go to jail for a bit, you get let out of jail once you're rehabilitated, and if you don't have any friends when you get back out of jail, you're more likely to re-offend. But loads of guys I went to school with, like really posh, Fuckwits, right? Really entitled guys were like, oh no, I can't, you know, they had that posh Glasgow accent. Um, you, know, you know the one that just sounds like you're trying to yawn, but you can't quite finish it off. <laughs> Scottish posh people I always think are the worst because they're not even no nose breathers, not mouth breathers. For some reason they're teeth breathers. Like. <laughs> And they were going, uh, I can't be friends with Zane anymore, Larry. I, I know it was in self-defense, but if my employer finds out that I'm friends with a murderer, I'll lose my job. So I can't be friends with Zane anymore because I'll lose my job. And I'm like, somebody's died in this situation and you're somehow making you the victim. <laughs> People need support when they get back out. And the way it happened was Zane was outside of a pub having a cigarette and this guy started attacking him. 
And when he started attacking Zane, Zane punched him. And when he punched him, it was at the side of the head. So the guy fell to the floor. But you know, if you're in a car accident, the, like, the paramedic will be like, you might seem fine now, but you could have brain damage. Well, that's what happened to the guy, right? He died the next day in hospital. It's a really tragic and regrettable thing that happened. So we went to Starbucks. <laughs> I was the first one to arrive, right? Because Zane only gets one weekend out once a month, right? And I get excited when I'm going to see him. And when I was sat waiting for Zane to arrive, I got a text message from him. It said, hey man, looking forward to seeing you. Is it okay if one of my friends from inside comes along? <laughs> and I thought, well, I can't really say no, because Zane might get a bit defensive. <laughs> So I text them back with, yeah, that sounds great. Looking forward to seeing them too. And Zane texts back with, brilliant. This is Danny's first day out in 10 years. <laughs> so immediately I start Googling on my phone. I start going, what do you have to do to get 10 years in prison? <laughs> Because I'm thinking, I have no idea what this guy's done. Like, maybe, because he's got more time than Zane. So maybe he's murdered someone, but he does it on purpose. And I thought, 10 years. And I thought, oh, God, maybe he's a paedophile. Larry Dean goes for a green tea with a pedo. <laughs> That's not a good PR move. I could lose my job over this. <laughs> And murderers or not, it's still a stressful thing. Mixing friends, it's always stressful. You know what I mean? Because we've all been to a stag or a hen do and we've met our friends of our friends and then we stop liking that friend. <laughs> it's like, oh, you're different around them. I'm not going to your wedding anymore. I always, usually you have to do that in relationships, you know, like when you have to meet their, other, their friends and that. Like, cause I'm finding that now, cause I got in a relationship uh, in, like during COVID and I met my boyfriend uh, through a friend, um, but it wasn't like in a gay bar or on Grindr. Um, gay bars in Glasgow though, like they tend to be more intimidating than in other cities. Like if you go to a gay bar in Glasgow and you drop your phone, you're just gonna have to kick it home. <laughs> the thing is it's also like during lockdown it's a difficult time to get in a relationship because you're trapped in the same house it's like the shining every single day <laughs> and we had arguments because every couple argues unless you're um creepy <laughs> you know those couples that you meet they never argue and they glide up to you at parties being like we never ever argue <laughs> looking at them and you're thinking one of you is going to be on the news someday <laughs> <laughs> but I'm trying to, to do that uh, as well. Also, because, like, you know what? By the way, in case any straight people are wondering, uh, like, because a lot of my straight mates are like, oh, you're in a relationship with another guy. Oh, man, that must be better. You must just watch football and bum all day. <laughs> it's like, no, uh, I wish, I wish. Every relationship, every relationship has the exact same dynamic. Whether you're gay or straight, it's always the same dynamic. Every relationship is always made up of an organised person and a disorganised person. And I can see who's in a relationship because you're now looking at each other, going, you'd be living in a bin if it wasn't for me. The reason why you get together is because organised people are attracted to disorganised. Because the first time they see them, they fall for a trick. Because they go, wow, they're so laid back. <laughs> they must have everything organised. And then a few months passes, the smoke screen leaves you, and you're just left going, how are you not dead yet? <laughs> and by this point,
point it's too late because you're thinking, I wonder if I should break up with them because I thought they'd be organised, but in fact they're disorganised and I'm having to organise my life and their life. I'm exhausted, I haven't slept ever since I met them. Oh my, maybe I should break up with them. I can't break up with them. I've made plans for us both. <laughs> Just gonna totally ruin that spreadsheet I made for us. I'm the disorganised one in the relationship, you probably can tell. <laughs> Big surprise. But you can usually tell, if you can't tell which one you are, organised people usually give themselves away in an argument, right? Because if you're like, right? organised people, by the way, I love you. But, you're organised. Oh, thank, no, I need you, I need you in my life. Uh, and, but when organised people are in arguments, and I'm sorry for this next bit, um, <laughs> but in arguments, organ <laughs> you're so sweet, I don't want to say anything bad about organised people, and uh, please do. Okay, cool. <laughs> Fucking bitch. Um, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you're American as well, yeah? Oh, cool, I could hear from your accent. Yeah, yeah, I know. I love as well, I called you a bitch and you laughed and you're almost in a kind of American kind of thing of, oh my God, Scottish culture. <laughs> Come on, get out of it and call me, I can't. Come on. <laughs> in arguments, Organised people have this ability that freaks disorganised ones out. In an argument, organised people do the thing of they don't have to argue about things at the time. <laughs> they can store them up. <laughs> it's almost like they've got a box in their brain. <laughs> oh, I didn't like that comment there. It's not big enough for an argument now, though. <laughs> What I'm going to do, I'm going to take the comment that you just said. I'm going to put it into this box. And then when we have a big argument, that'll be the ammo. There's no room for context in the box, I'm afraid. Intent doesn't fit in there either. Get used to the thing of being in a relationship because I've been single for like a year and a half, and I, that's what I want. I was like, oh, I want to be in a relationship. I want to get called special by somebody and then not do the air quotes. <laughs> oh, but there's one thing you have to learn in a relationship. I've noticed is when your partner comes home from work and tells you about their day, that's fine. Don't mind that at all. But you know when they start telling you about the person that they work with that they don't like. <laughs> And the number one rule is you have to take your partner's side. <laughs> Even though the other person is probably right. <laughs> but in order for you to take your partner's side, your partner, when they're quoting that other person, will give them the bitchiest voice <laughs> ever. They'll be like, oh God, you never guess what Sandra said to me today. I was like, hi, Sandra, can you please take your stuff out of the fridge? Because it is actually my fridge. And you wouldn't believe what Sandra said to me then. She was all like, eh, that's my injections and I've got diabetes. <laughs> and I was like, oh, but Sandra, please, it's getting in the way of my sticky toffee pudding. It's inconvenient. <laughs> And you wouldn't believe what Sandra said then. She was all like, eh, excuse me, I don't want to die today. <laughs> and you're listening to this and you're thinking, if you were to read the transcript of that conversation, you'd be like, eh, I think Sandra had a point here. <laughs> but you can't say that because who knows what voice they would give to you. That's one of the main rules of the relationship. I never expected as well to go out with a posh person with a job. <laughs> uh, well, my mum is very posh. She's a posh Scot. My mum talks like this. If you have heard a posh Scot talk before, it is like this. So my mum sounds like a whale. 
She's one of those posh people that don't seem to have any bones. Like, mm. <laughs> you know the ones he's in, like gliding through Waitrose, like. Mm. <laughs> I have to do that again because you won't know what Waitrose is in America. Gliding through the mall. <laughs> My mum's so po like, oh, I love her laugh though, right? Her laugh's amazing. Um, and I know you're not gonna think it's that amazing compared to other ones <laughs> we've heard tonight. <laughs> Wouldn't it be amazing if it was actually just somebody with a YouTube video? On, on repeat of just somebody falling down a well. Ah. <laughs> you turn the lights on, it's just a truck reversing. <laughs> But my mum's laugh is so funny, right? Because she only ever gives you one ha, and then her voice is extraordinary. It's just he. <laughs> so easy to find her at a party. He. <laughs> so that's your mum or a carbon monoxide detector. <laughs> Sometimes you get a few has off of her. She'll be going, he, 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 he. I can never find her at the supermarket. <laughs> I've only ever seen my mum like laugh her head off a few times. All the has come together very quickly. Like, he, my dad was sat next to me and goes, Jesus, Mary, you sound like a metal detector. <laughs> yeah, my, my dad's working class. Uh, I actually don't know what I am because my dad raised me working class in a middle class household. Uh, basically, we had a cleaner, but we stole from her. They are very funny. They've got good banter, my parents. Like, you know that mate, right? My parents are this, right? You know that mate that if they think you're wrong about anything, they'll bet you 10 pounds on it. Being like, oh no, mate, you're completely wrong. Bet you a 10 or. Like, they bet on elections, which makes, you know, makes it more interesting when it's not going your way, at least. Like, they always vote conservative, though. Uh, and obviously, I'm not a fan, right? <laughs> and I did try and change my mum's mind. I was like, Mum, why are you voting Conservative? And mum was like, well, Larry, when you get older, you become more right-wing. <laughs> That's why I think the Conservatives never win in Scotland. We do not live long enough. <laughs> But they are very Catholic, though. That's probably why, that's probably why they, they vote that way, because my mum and dad are Catholic, and uh, I'm Catholic as well. Um, yeah. And uh, <laughs> obviously not a good Catholic now. Um, now I'm just an overqualified altar boy. <laughs> so I hope I didn't offend any pedos in the audience with that joke. Yeah. It's, it's something you have to worry about is offending people now, isn't it? You have to worry about offending them. And I think it's, I actually wanted to be a squeaky clean comedian for a long time. Genuinely, I really wanted to. All right, I can do it now. Right, hold on. I wanted to be this guy. Right, here we go. Yeah, right, here we go. I, I wanted to be this comedian. I wanted to be a London observational comedian. <laughs> I tell you what's busy, guys. The underground. <laughs> Where is everybody going? <laughs> you could take your car, couldn't you? But a congestion charge, get lost. <laughs> I was in King's Cross the other day and I was like, King's Cross? <laughs> Why doesn't the Queen cheer him up then? Oh, 
London observational comic. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed him. He'll be back later. <laughs> um, which is, oh, by the way, Scottish people, do you know that English people <laughs> tend to think we're backwards? It's so weird, because when I moved down to England, loads of Londoners were like, oh my God, have you just moved down from Glasgow to London to escape homophobia? Are you a gay refugee in London? As the Scottish people are not homophobic, we've got a rule in this country, it's either you're a good cunt or a bad cunt. <laughs> Your race, your gender, your sexual orientation doesn't play a part in it. But if you try and make that play a part in somebody else, you're a bad cunt. That's how we work it. It's a really simple system. I think, though, Scottish people just love proving other people wrong. We love it so much. I think we probably used to be homophobic, and then somebody told us that we were. We're like, all right, you think we're homophobic? I'm going to have sex with this man just to prove England wrong. <laughs> Oh, flower of Scotland, <laughs> and will we see? We don't even need to use the word gay in Scotland. We've got... The <laughs> Scottish people have this strange ability. They can describe somebody as a homosexual by using any noun. <laughs> All right, is that guy a bit of a blueberry? <laughs> it's a set of maracas over there. English people can do it, but they can only use activities to describe somebody as gay. Be like, oh God, he's the kind of guy who likes to leave the windows open. <laughs> oh, Barry loves a fundraiser. <laughs> Bet you wear your slippers round the house. I moved down to, to England a long time ago. Uh, I moved back uh, and I had to live with my parents again. And oh man, the, the banner was too much. I had to move out again. <laughs> See, you living with my mum. That's the thing, right? My mum would take the piss out of me, which I'm fine with because I make fun of her voice. Because uh, me and my mum don't always see eye to eye because uh, hers at the side of her head. We all joke. <laughs> But my mum loves making fun of my stammer. Uh, I've got a stammer. Sometimes I have it, uh, it just comes out randomly. Uh, it's trying to see why I'm good at doing voices, because I had to cover up my stammer for ages. And my mum loves the fact I've got a stammer. I was on the phone to her yesterday, right, and she was at the shops. I was like, Mum, are you at the shops? I was like, yeah, I'm at the shops. What do you want? <laughs> Like, can you get me a sandwich and a muffin? Okay, I'll get you a sandwich and 23 muffins. No comeback to that, it was too good, wasn't it? But the reason why I moved to England uh, was because I nearly got in trouble uh, with the law, uh, which is why I've never been able to judge Zane, because I had my own legal trouble. And um, before uh, we start this story, just so you know, it's all made up. <laughs> Me and my friends uh, stole money from a bank. Uh, I can't say the name of the bank, obviously. Um, so let's just call the bank Adam. <laughs> <laughs> so me and my mate stole money from Adam uh, by taking money from the bank's accounts, like, because banks have their own accounts and I took lots of things. We had somebody working in the bank and, uh, and I had such low self esteem. I didn't want to take the money, but I was like, I'll have the money and I can give it to people who I want to be my friend. It's <laughs> so pathetic though. That self-esteem issue is part one. Um, I think it was because I was a virgin for too long. I think like that messes with your head. If you're a virgin for too long, like you know there's a minimum age you can have sex at. There should be a maximum you have to have it by. If you're 20 and you've not lost your virginity, the government should get involved. <laughs> 
Because sex is like chicken pox. If you don't get it when you're younger, it is going to scar you in later life. <laughs> but it made me the most unconfident person. I hated myself for so long. I don't hate myself anymore, but I hated myself so much. Even like during sex, when I started having sex, I would pretend I was somebody else because I would feel sorry for the other person. <laughs> Because I'd be like, ugh, they want to have sex with me, but I'm me. I would never have sex with me, so there's something wrong with you. <laughs> so I would pretend I was somebody else during sex. Have a guess who? <laughs> I've been going to Starbucks a lot recently, guys, and I've noticed something. I like my sexual partners the same way I like my coffee. Having someone shout out the wrong name when they give it to me. <laughs> Speaking of Starbucks, when we were sat in, when I was sat in Starbucks with Zane and Danny, <laughs> I, oh by the way, if you're ever going out for tea with murderers, I'd highly recommend going to Starbucks because they've got big windows, CCTV, and they serve porridge so they're comfortable as well. <laughs> And when I was sat uh, there with Zane and Danny, by the way, Danny was the most intense looking person I've ever seen in my life. I know I look intense, but Danny had my kind of gaunt look, but his eyes never stopped moving. <laughs> it was almost like there was a fly in there being like, all right, here you go. <laughs> Not to today, man, oh, that's nice. And Zane was like, uh, Larry, why have you lost so much weight? Have you just been broken up with? Because <laughs> those two are heavily linked for me. Like, Zane's always been my shoulder to cry on when it comes to relationships, even since the first one. Um, because when I started um, being in relationships and stuff, uh, it was quite, an, you remember your first love? Quite an intense experience. Because you think, oh, I'll text them all the time. They'll love that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do you remember that? It was like, my first love, oh my God. You know when you see someone and you immediately go, oh, I love you, and we're gonna have so many dogs together. <laughs> I had that with this guy, and, um, and then one day, ghosted me. Never heard from him ever again. And I was like, oh, I know. And I was like, I thought those two dates went brilliantly. <laughs> Ghosting, if you don't know, is you remove all communication from the other person. You block them on everything and you never hear from them ever again. And uh, he ghosted me, right? And I don't want to like badmouth him or anything like that. Um, and I, so I'm not gonna tell you his name, right? So let's just call him Royal Bank of Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> so now you know that entirely made up story, okay. <laughs> so uh, basically, we, uh, I, I, I kind of thought, oh, I was like, he ghosted me and I felt so bad about him ghosting me. And this is the thing, see, when you break up with somebody uh, or they break up with you, you get feedback. You can be like, oh, I don't want to go out with you because, and then you tell them why, and that's feedback. You can be like, okay, cool, it's either I agree with that, that's fair enough, I can learn from that, or you could be like, you're just projecting your stuff on me. So when somebody ghosts you, you have to make up your own feedback. <laughs> and that drives you nuts, because you're like, oh, what else is shit about me? I've got loads of things. I'm going to write them out all over the walls. <laughs> and I thought, I need to get him to love me, because I love him. And I thought I could text him, right? He had blocked my number, but I got a new phone. <laughs> so anyway, this is my text to try and win Adam's love back, right? And me and my mates sat and wrote this together. It was almost like a writer's room being like, oh, it's like a gangster meeting, like, oh, come on, we can do this. One kiss at the end? No, two kisses at the end. <laughs> two kisses is blowjob territory, my friend. <laughs> so here we go. This is the best text message, I thought, of all time. Hey, bud, comma. Am I formal or informal? Who knows? Hope you're good. I'm back from my tempestuous stint in Australia. It was fun hanging out before. 
It would be great to see you again if you're keen. I'm in London on the 8th to 10th of May. So if you're around, let's do this. <laughs> All right, if you think that's bad, the last bit. Peace. And that's how I started doing the dinosaur noise when I read that back. <laughs> when I put peace, I was like, that's the cringiest thing I've ever put at the end of a text message. But you know what? Three days later, he texts me back. And I was like, hmm. Does three days, that's okay. It does take some time to assemble a group of writers together. <laughs> and then he texts me back with this. Hey, Larry, comma... What a dick. <laughs> oh yeah, just so you know, uh, there is obviously a nice way of letting somebody down. Ghosting's not one of them, and either is this text message. Actually, you know what? I'll just read it, and you can be the judge. Okay, I'll be neutral. I'll just read it. Really sorry. <laughs> I don't think meeting up's a good idea. I've been seeing somebody for a little while now and it's going really well. Can you believe the audacity? I wouldn't want to jeopardize that by seeing somebody that I saw once or twice. It was fucking twice. <laughs> Even in a friendly setting, you're such a nice guy though, I hope we meet again. You're so brilliant. Shut up. Anyway. <laughs> 10 years ago and it still doesn't sound any better. <laughs> My therapist says I've made progress. I received that text message at night time and I text them back. But you know when you text somebody at night time, your texts are weirder? <laughs> you don't even have to be drunk, but for some reason your texts are weirder and you read them back the next morning and you're like, <gasps> damn moon! <laughs> Because I text him with, I hope you drown in a fire. <laughs> right, see, see, by the way, see whenever I get broken up with, the reason why Zane asked about that was because whenever I get broken up with, I lose so much weight. I think it was because I was like overweight as a kid and then I get picked on for it. So whenever something bad happens, I'm like, oh, it must be because I'm fat. Uh, it's because I've got body dysmorphia. Like, body dysmorphia, if you don't know, is like the way that you see me is not the same way I see myself. Right, so you're looking at me, you probably see a skinny white guy. A lot of the times I look at my reflection, I see a fat Chinese lady. <laughs> but she usually says to me, go away and stop looking through my window. So after the whole, like, Adam, I'll just call him Adam, right? after the whole Adam breakup, after the whole Adam ghosting situation, I was like, I'm gonna lose loads of weight. So I was losing so much weight, my self-esteem was so low, and it was before I came out as gay, so I couldn't tell people why I was sad, and I thought, I'm just gonna have to tell people why I'm sad, and, uh, and I told my parents, I came out to my parents because of that, and when I came out to my parents, I was sat at the kitchen table with them, and my dad was there, and my mum was there, and I told them I was a bender. <laughs> and it just went silent, and my dad stormed out of the room in a really bad mood. And I thought, oh man, they hate me now. It's gonna be weird around the house, because they're Catholic as well. I'm gonna be the, the sinner of the family. And at that point, my dad came back into the room, and then he handed my mum 10 pounds. <laughs> I 
and you know that thing, a lot of, uh, a lot of gay people do it. Of they come out as bisexual before they're ready to come out. And I thought, I'll just apologise. I'll say I'm bisexual because I was still feeling apologetic. I was like, Mum, Dad, it's fine. I'm bisexual. I'm bisexual. I'm not fully gay. I'm bisexual. And the, my favourite thing was watching my mum have to give my dad five pounds back. <laughs> Why? Anyway, this, uh, we'll go back to the murderers, right? And, um, so, when I was sat in Starbucks with Zane and Danny, right? And Zane was saying, Larry, why have you lost so much weight? Are you going through a breakup at the moment? And I thought, you know what? I'm not going to tell him this whole thing because I was trying to learn how to deal with it by myself. I'd already told Zane breakups before. He's using my shoulder to cry on, but I thought, I'll leave it. He's got his friend here. And I went, eh, no, I'm still in a relationship, Zane. Yeah, I'm still in a relationship. And when I said that, Danny went, all right. <laughs> Is your bird hot, eh? <laughs> and I was just about to reach for my party popper. <laughs> but I could see Zane's eyes open up really wide like that. And if somebody opens their eyes really wide like that, when you're about to say something to someone, you go, well, I'm not going to say that anymore, am I? And I was thinking, why does Zane not want me to tell Danny that I'm gay? And I thought, oh, maybe that's what it is. Danny's in jail for gay bashing or something. He's one of these people that I've heard about that's committed homicide. <laughs> Larry stole that joke from me, I'll have you know. Lunge, an observational comic. So I thought, you know what, it's okay. I can pretend to be straight. I can do this because uh, I did it for 23 years. And, um, and also, I've been watching quite a lot of straight porn recently. <laughs> and when I was wanking in Dubai... <laughs> wanking in Dubai, sing along if you know the words. <laughs> wanking in Dubai, just wanking. That'll ruin singing in the rain for you. <laughs> So when I, was, I noticed actually I'm hunching on this side because I'm talking about masturbation. Have you noticed that when men masturbate, they hunch over like that? Men look like cavemen when they masturbate, just like that. Like, the only thing a man ever looks like he's missing when he's wanking is a lantern. Actually, when women do it, right, I've never seen a woman do it before, but ladies, your PR is a lot stronger. Whenever you hear about female masturbation, it always sounds a lot more relaxing <laughs> and exotic, like head back in the pillow eating a bounty bar. <laughs> I have no idea, maybe women do. Um... <laughs> <laughs> what is that? <laughs> That's what you do, isn't it? <laughs> like you're looking for Peter Pan. Oh, actually, one more, one more. All right, I like... <laughs> like you're supplying the electricity for a dodgem. <laughs> Loose change in a vending machine now. We can do it all night. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> But yeah, it's a lot better. Because oh, also, when I was watching this, uh, when I was, oh yeah, when I was in Dubai, and, it, and uh, <laughs> I was watching straight amateur porn in Dubai. Because uh, Dubai, as we've clarified, don't like people of my kind. They're not fans of level six strawberry cheesecakes. <laughs> so I was watching the straight stuff, and I didn't like it, by the way. Because it, it wasn't even amateur. Amateur porn is better. I think amateur's so much better. When you watch amateur porn, you go, oh, I could do that. <laughs> Same reason why I like Scottish football. <laughs> but the professional stuff's terrible. Because they talk during it. I don't like that, man. See, when people talk during sex, it's so weird. <laughs> like, you know, because it's always the most obvious thing. Not like, you know, Edinburgh's the capital of Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, we may as well enjoy this bit because I can't imagine they'll ever keep this in, right? But you know what? 
But I was once watching this porno, right? And this is the epitome of how weird it is talking during sex, right? I was watching this porno. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> What's your name? Dawn. Dawn. Nice to meet you, Dawn. And I feel like I need to know your name for this, but... <laughs> what do you do, Dawn? You're an actor. Okay, cool. Not that kind. <laughs> oh, good, because I was like, oh, technique, come on, tell us, Dawn. Um, right, so when I was. <laughs> I can't even look at you, Dawn, I'm so sorry. Uh, right, so when I was watching this porno, that's the bit, isn't it? Um, isn't it weird that I can talk about two murderers, but this is the most difficult part of the show? <laughs> right, so when I was watching this porno, right, the person was doing this, they were going, oh, I'm tight, I'm tight. My bum hole is so tight. Like, of course you're tight. Everybody's bum hole is tight. If that wasn't the case, it would be chaos. <laughs> That's the whole point of a bum hole, isn't it? Because bums are small on the outside and they're big when you get in. <laughs> they're like weather spoons. <laughs> so I was watching this straight amateur porn in Dubai, right, and uh, doing my thing. And, and when, I was, when I was doing it, uh, a knock on the door happened. I thought, I better answer that door because they might have a key to the room. So I got up quickly and I put my willy down in between my legs, um, like tucked it. It doesn't usually go anywhere else. <laughs> like, oh, I better hide that. There we go. <laughs> but I put my willy down in between my legs and, uh, and I pulled my trousers up and I started walking towards the door like that. <laughs> Like, the way that your auntie dances at a wedding. <laughs> Usually with one hand with sausage rolls and a napkin. <laughs> Trying to get other people to do it with her, like, Oh, come on, Agnes, simply the best, it's your song. <laughs> so I walked up towards the door like that, and I opened it up, and a guy was just standing there, and he handed me a chocolate bar, and then walked away. I still do not know to this day why he did that. I've never been so paranoid in my life because I took the chocolate bar off and shut the door. Started walking around the room thinking, oh my God, maybe there's a camera in here. <laughs> They've seen me watching straight porn and now they're training me like a dog to do it again. Good boy. So I had this knowledge of straightness at the ready. <laughs> and when I was sat in Starbucks with Zane and Danny, and Danny went, is your bird hot, I? I went, aye, Danny, she's really hot. Larry Dean, BBC News, Straightville. <laughs> I found it mental though, right? Really weird, because I was like, is your bird hot? Who has ever answered that question being like, no, she's a munter. <laughs> and I assumed that was the end of the conversation, but Danny was insisting, he was like, oh, mate, right, so, so she's hot. See, when you're, you know, doing your stuff, man, what's your, what's your position? <laughs> and I was like, uh, <laughs> missionary? All right, I like doing them up the arse. <laughs> Oh, how the tables have turned. <laughs> this mirror is distorted. 
And Zane went, uh, he went, oh, uh, I've got to go to the toilet, guys. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Which always is weird apologising going to the toilet, but I could see Zane didn't want to leave me and Danny alone together because he's like, that situation is not going to work out well. <laughs> it was almost like Zane needed to figure out the riddle of the fox, the chicken and the seeds. <laughs> All right, maybe if I take Larry to the toilet with me and leave him there, I'll go back and get Danny and then leave him there, take Larry back to the table. But Zane just left us. And when I was sat alone with Danny, I started getting more nervous because his questioning began to get more intense. You're like, so, uh, Larry, can I see a picture of your message? And I was like, uh, no, uh, my phone is like, um, it's, it's broke. Um, and he's like, oh, all right. And I was like, aye, and I probably should have put my phone on silent at this point. <laughs> and my phone did go off, right? And Danny looked right through me. He's just like that. His eyes stopped moving. And I was like, oh my God, he's going to kick the shit out of me now. I'm done for, I'm a dead man. But I realised there was two police officers in Starbucks at the time. And I was like, brilliant. He can't do anything while there's two police officers in Starbucks. And we're just sat in silence, me and Danny, right? Being sat in silence with somebody you don't know very well when you're mixing friends is a bit awkward. Imagine silence for a minute with a murderer. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, he's gonna kill me. And when <laughs> the police officers were chatting, we could hear what they were saying. And one of them said to the other, oh man, he's such a poofter. Right? And obviously I heard that because it's got a buzzword in it. And I was like, poofter, hmm. <laughs> I'm not okay with that, but I'm in the middle of something. Please stay there. <laughs> and Danny went, excuse me, officer, did I just hear one of you say the word poofter? You're wearing a uniform, you should be setting an example. Using derogatory terms like that is unacceptable. I can complain about this. And I was like, oh, maybe Danny's not in jail for gay bashing after all. <laughs> maybe he's a paedophile, there's still hope. The police officers just ignored them and walked out and I was like, oh man, I can't believe I've judged Danny the whole time. And I was like, Danny, mate, I'm really sorry. For some reason, when I was gonna tell you I was gay, Zane did these big eyes and I freaked out and I thought you were a homophobe. Sorry for, th I thought you were in jail for gay bashing, to be honest, mate. Sorry for thinking you were a homophobe. And Danny went, I don't like gay people. I just hate police officers a lot more. <laughs> And I thought, you know what, I'm okay with that because he's not murdering me. <laughs> I'm better off than I was five minutes ago. And we ended up chatting, me and Danny, and we got on all right, and I learned something off of him. Well, first of all, my first question to Danny after that was, what were you in jail for? Because I thought, I need to just know. Danny was in jail for tax evasion. <laughs> because he murdered his accountant. <laughs> But we got on all right, and this is the thing, you can always learn something from somebody you disagree with, right? Because even though I don't agree with Danny being homophobic and I don't agree with him murdering his accountant, I learned something off from that day that I'm gonna remember forever. Because Danny was supposed to do eight years in jail, but he did 10 because he got caught smuggling stuff into prison. Danny was smuggling mobile phones that had porn downloaded onto them so the prisoners could watch porn. When I heard that, I thought, wow, next time I'm in Dubai. <laughs> uh, folks, you have been absolutely lovely. Thank you uh, so much for coming to the show. I think we can agree that if, uh, if I text you, can you text back? Uh, don't block. <laughs> This out is, please don't block me on anything. If you ghost me, I'll cry. Um, but folks, you've been so lovely. Thank you so much for coming. And uh, this has been a dream come true for me. So thank you. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.